You know how I love watching the sunset on top of my acacia canopy. <laughs> I've been growing a lot of acacia trees because I've been terraforming a lot. But let's go sleep. Let's go sleep. No! Welcome back to the Flower World, guys. I can't believe it's episode 99. Uh, finally? Already? I don't know what word to use here because it has been a long, long time since I started the series, but I feel like since I started making episodes again, like, that went by fast. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. I've been doing a ton of terraforming around here and I'm really happy with the way it's looking. As you can see, we're using the basalt, the acacia. I've been mixing in granite and brick and uh, even some like nether brick and blackstone in the back there and uh, different blocks on the beach as well, like uh, birch, stripped birch wood. And I'm gonna try and do more of that over here. This is a bit of a different terrain, I guess. It's more like, it, it's more like alpine-y. Whereas uh, over here, it's more tropical, jungly. And I think I'm gonna somehow have to make that transition because I want the whole edge of Salacia to obviously be pretty tropical, like palm trees and stuff. I've been experimenting with sort of, sort of some forced perspective. And what I mean by that is like, uh, if you go to Disney, like the, the castle looks bigger than it is because as it goes up, it gets smaller which kind of mimics the uh, the perspective effect of something really large. So I'm kind of trying to do a little bit of that uh, where the trees at the bottom are really big. And as we go up, I'm putting smaller trees, which makes sense uh, close up as well, because, you know, the higher you go up, the less oxygen there is for the trees. You just tend to see less trees on these rocky surfaces as well. But yeah. Adding in the rocks for these uh, for these steeper parts of the mountain here really improved the way things look. Uh, rather than just having it all dirt like here, just going through and replacing anything more than uh, one block thick with uh, different variants of acacia and cobble, stone, andesite, occasionally basalt. And it just, yeah, it just really helps. I'm, I'm having so much fun with this. Now, those of you who uh, check out my stream may have seen me working on uh, this B building, uh, but I finished it up off stream and I really decorated the place. So I'm pretty happy to be able to show this off now because this is the first building in this part of the city going up where I'm gonna start fleshing out the buildings a little more. This town is just supposed to look like very thrown together, very ramshackle, like just there because of the harbor. And then as we move into this area, it's gonna be very medieval. Uh, so I kind of want this area to be medieval, but we're moving up a little bit in the on the wealth scale as we move up the, <laughs> the terrain here. Uh, so yeah, this building's a little more fleshed out. The bees uh, are in here and I actually have it hooked up to be a little farm here, which is apparently full. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I should <laughs> convert some of this to honeycomb blocks and this and the likes. We've got just a little bee family in here just for decoration. I made this little decorative pond here with a little uh, chair swing. This is something I had actually built on my realm. I can't even remember where I found this design originally, but I love this little piece. It's so <laughs> nice to just sit by the pond on this little uh, swing. And uh, I got to get some fish in here. Uh, unfortunately, this guy didn't have any fish. Uh, I got to watch these mushrooms there. They always spread on you. Maybe I should string this a little bit so it doesn't get out of hand. But anyways, we've got this custom tree here with vines hanging down and beehives all in the tree. We've even got another beehive here on a pole. I'm really happy with this tree. Whoa. Popping noises. Yeah, this is sort of maintenance for the farm if I need to get into these hoppers. In fact, yeah, I do have overflow for this chest here. That's good to know. So the items aren't completely backed up yet. We've got this little area with this rocky overhang thing 
and uh, a campfire for you to sit with your friends and talk about all the beekeeping you did that day, I guess. If we go up the stairs here, you get a nice view of this custom tree, and then you can enter the building, which we got just some basic decorations here. You know, some shears for shearing the bees. We got another hive in here. Maybe, like, this is where you repair the hives if they've been damaged or something. I don't know. I don't know what bee apiarists do. I'm really happy with how the roof came out as well. And uh, we've got this little kitchenette sort of area. And... Uh, little bedroom for whoever's doing the beekeeping they get a pretty grand bedroom here a uh, nice big bed I'm pretty much done with it I don't think I'm gonna add much to this and uh, as you can see it's a pretty productive farm as well so I'm really happy I haven't really done much with the cathedral since last episode I do want to get back to this at some point the only thing I've done is sort of uh, fleshed out this top design here uh, I was just kind of have an inspiration one night and I decided to use this little red nether brick trim which I think works well for the top here but other than that I haven't done much to this since the last episode I found a really cool design for a pipe organ so I think I'm gonna put that here and then have like the pew here between the two falling spider things maybe turn this into a spider I don't know I've got all sorts of ideas for the insides of this place still pretty stumped on what to do with the back uh but yeah hopefully we'll get back to this maybe in today's episode uh because next episode is episode 100 which i'm probably just gonna do like a little little tour of everything i've done or like review of the history of the world i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do yet but uh we'll get back to that so because i'm kind of on a roll with the terraforming i'm just gonna do a bunch of that right now and uh, keep going on what I've started. Uh, but yeah, I was like trying to light things up in here. Ah! See what I'm talking about? There's like a whole bunch of mobs that live in this thing. And I was hearing them all over the place. So I really got to light this up better. But I came down here and it's really bad. Check this out. You hear that? So I knew you guys had to be here for this. Oh no! In the turtle! What happened here? How how old do you guys think some of these zombies are? Like, some of these sh must have been here for so long. And we got a creeper. Well, we've got a nice little mob farm here. Thank you for recharging my elytra. Appreciate it. My turtle! Now what? Where is that coming from? What What are you doing in here? All right, so shenanigans aside, you know, we, we, got, we got most of this lit up. We got most of the mobs out of here, but I've been doing a ton of terraforming, but not over here. I kind of put a pause on this side and I started taking what I learned from doing the sort of block mixing down here and applying it to the uh, shores of Salacia in here, which is a project I've been putting off because it's a massive amount of work and I wasn't sure how to make it look good. Uh, and, I did, and I didn't want to do it until I was confident I could make it look good. But like I said, using what I learned here, I, I was sort of confident enough to begin the project. And I've got like basically one full of the three sides done. So I'd say I'm about a third done, but this is a crazy amount of work. I, I played like, I don't know, 14 hours of Minecraft yesterday or something, and it was basically all just this. So this is a massive project, and then once this is all done, we have to extend the water and get it all filled in so that it's one big lake. And uh, yeah, our fish are gonna be so happy. I'm so excited for all of our little fishies. They're gonna love it so much once it's done. And uh, hopefully we can keep getting even more from the wandering trader because they're really going to make this place come alive. I've also been collecting coral so that once this is all underwater, we can start placing a ton of coral all over these shores. And I think it's going to come out really cool as like one big reef area. But yeah, I, I think this looks really insane. It's like a custom biome almost. And it's it's really cool. It would be even even cool without the water, but I think it's going to look amazing once we get seagrass and kelp and ah, it's just going to look so cool. 
So yeah, we're using a ton of acacia, stone, cobble, andesite, and sand on this, and actually dirt as well, because a lot of these sand blocks, I use dirt underneath to hold them up, so we've also been grinding through a ton of dirt, and it's starting to look really cool under here, actually. I try to go through once in a while and light up any place that mobs could potentially spawn, just so that it doesn't get out of hand under here, but yeah, it's probably pretty hard to see in the video, but it's starting to look pretty damn cool under here. Hey! Hey! This is an unauthorized meeting. I, no, I will not have this. Not on my world, not on my watch. Best way to deal with this is usually to have one of the creepers explode. Yeah, see? They're like little, little bombs. So many little bats. But anyways, I'm gonna keep grinding on this project and try to get it done Hopefully this episode, it's just going to take me a lot of grinding over the next week. Maybe I'll stream some of it. Uh, but it's kind of zen. I, I really like these big, repetitive terraforming projects. They're very fun because they're extremely rewarding. Um, they kind of, like, don't cause you to think too much, but you still got to be a little creative. So they're, they're really fun to work on. I like it. I'm going to just go back at it, I guess. And side two is done. It's looking crazy. We're, uh, we're actually probably more than two-thirds of the way done because this third side is pretty short. It's like very close to the building as well. This area right here is very elongated and uh, a gentle slope, but this is like cliffs over here. And uh, a lot of it I'll be able to be underwater where I can basically float around. It's almost like you're in creative mode when you're underwater because you can just zoop, zoop, zoop. Zip, 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 zip. So we've gotten this far. I might as well just finish this off and uh, yeah, do another jump cut to whenever I'm done with this third and final side. So I'll see you guys <laughs> whenever that is. Holy crap, I finally finished. I finally finished. All the sides are completely done. So now, all that's left to do is fill in this water to the edges and start placing a bunch of kelp and coral and seagrass, which is kind of the fun part, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of zone out and uh, get, get zen and try and fill this up with water. And then, like I said, after that, the really fun part of decorating with the coral, the kelp, the seagrass, that's gonna be awesome. It's been a long time since I've had a wandering trader that offered me any sort of cod or puffer fish or tropical fish. The tropical fish are obviously the coolest ones. So uh, yeah, I just gotta keep my eyes peeled for more wandering traders. And every time we get fish, we'll dump them in here. And hopefully eventually it'll be a little bit more lively than it is right now. I wish we could get squid, but you can't do it anymore on super flat, unfortunately which is really sad. You know, I wish before that update had dropped, I had name tagged some squid so we would have some sort of relics, some living fossils on this world, but I did not have the foresight. Anyhow, I'm kind of blabbing on here. So let's get to work filling in this water. So I haven't really done much on the uh, third side yet, but these first two sides are kind of connected in an L shape. And so I've got these like, uh, I think a little over halfway filled and uh, yeah, I'm coming up to the corner here, which is the really satisfying part. So I figured I'd show you, show you guys like a little bit of what the process looks like. Basically, every couple rows you do uh, ends up extending the source blocks over and they sort of slide on down the wall like that. So it's actually not that much placing water. Um, this didn't actually take me that long. I think uh, max I'm at like four hours or something right now. But yeah, when you come to this corner here, as soon as I fill in one of these blocks, it's going to update all the way down the line, which always looks really cool. So I thought I'd show you guys that. I think it's gonna be this block here that does it. Let's see. One more. Oh, there it is, there it goes. Yeah, so that's always pretty satisfying to watch. <laughs> and it makes this side pretty easy. All you have to go back in and do is like these little concave parts, which are pretty easy to fill in when the rest of it's all filled in. The only annoying thing is these little water glitches that appear. Getting pretty close now, so I'm just gonna grind it out, 
keep going on the water placement, and then uh, we have the fun task of decorating it all and lighting it up. And the fish are already loving it, as you can see, so I'm really excited. That's all done, and it looks really, really cool. I can't wait to get some light down there with some sea pickles and glowstone and stuff like that, because right now it's pretty dark. But the fish are loving it, and the only part left to do is this little corner here, which I left for the end. So that should be pretty easy. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't think it'll take long. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick, and then uh, yeah, it's, a, it's just a matter of bone mealing, placing down a bunch of kelp, coral, and uh, I've been collecting coral. We'll, we'll, we'll put down pretty much everything we got and, and see where that gets us. We'll probably still need a lot more from the Wandering Trader, but... It's me, Future Mog, and we do need a lot more coral from the Wandering Trader. What we had only got me so far, but it's time to update this map. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we'll fly over there together. And it's updated. Yeah. Um, this really just puts the sheer scale of this project in perspective for me. Like, seeing the massive size of this lake compared to these mountains I did um, and like compared to the size of this entire mountain and the whole base I don't know it's just really crazy um, but yeah enough staring at it on the map let's go take a look at it for realsies ow 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 uh, it looks really cool at night so I'm kind of glad it's night uh, because I've got a lot of sea pickles and glowstone in and I sort of spread the kelp and the seagrass around it's not done. I think it, it still needs a lot more work. I want to mix in like birch and sandstone into the into the sand a lot more, which I only kind of started doing a little bit. Um, I really wish you could get the uh, what what's it called again? Conduit. Yeah, I, I really wish you could get the conduit on super flat so that I could like breathe underwater and build more easily uh, without having to brew a bunch of potions. But yeah. Um, we, we tried to decorate the best we could with the coral and stuff like that. For some reason, the fish love this one corner, and I just have to live with that. Uh, no matter where I place them in the lake, they seem to love coming back over here. Uh, but yeah, the coral did not last very long. We still have a little bit left, but uh, yeah, we definitely got to trade for that whenever we see it. And uh, yeah, man, other than that, I'm, I'm just like really happy with this project other than those little tiny tweaks uh, that I want to make. It's pretty much done. The one other thing we got to do with this build is uh, just kind of touch up and finish up the inside. There's sort of this whole part of the build that's kind of pointless as is. And I'd like to get a bunch of villagers in here again and try and uh, light it up a little better and finish up a couple of these houses that I started in here. But other than that, it's pretty much done. So that was really good to get done before episode 100. I'm pretty happy with that. And obviously we still have a lot of terraforming to do over here and uh, up here and stuff like that. But the the lake itself is finished. Lake Salacia, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Should the lake have a different name than than Salacia itself, which is the building? I don't know. Oh, my. Oh, man. It is. It is scary down there. Let's not look over there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into my room. My room is my safe space. <sighs> I've been grinding like crazy on the cathedral. I said I wanted to get back to this this episode, and I sort of designed a whole back for it. So it's starting to come together here, and I also put together the sides. So I'm starting to fill it in here, and it's looking really good. I just kind of like forced myself to do it and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. I really wasn't sure if I wanted to just do big tall windows on the side or if I should split them up but I feel like it's just so much more like huge when you do the giant giant windows and they're gonna be dark windows so like it's gonna have this crazy feel when you're in here which is like sort of how it feels to be in a real cathedral uh, and we just gotta like clean up the walls a little bit and make it look uh, really crazy, really crazy in here. But you can sort of see how it's coming out, like how the windows are gonna look in here, um, which is gonna be crazy. So right here in front of the window is gonna be a big pipe organ. So the organist will sit there, and then right in front of there is gonna be like where the preacher would go, and like, 
you know, seats for like the important people. I don't know, like the the chorus, the cor, I, the chorus, the, the chorale, the, you know what I'm trying to say, the people who sing, and then we'll we'll have uh, the seats behind these little spiders. So we'll probably put up like a fence, you know, maybe iron bars or something, and then have the seats behind here. And then, yeah, I, I'm really excited for the next update because there's going to be um, candles so we can fill this place with candles. Also, there's a, a few spots that I'm working on up here that I think I want to... Oh, and look, I, uh, I included that same symbol up here, which I think is cool. Our little symbol, the, the spider god symbol. And uh, yeah, uh, right through here. Um, I think down here... I want to punch like a window and, and incorporate like a window into the spider farm once that glass comes out, the tinted glass um, that, that basically doesn't let light through so that you'll be able to see into the spider farm when you're flying around, but uh, it won't let light into the farm. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and get as much done as I possibly can on this building uh, before I finish this episode. And then in the next cut, we'll check out what I get done and uh, maybe do a little bit on the courtyard as well here. I've got some ideas for some like landscaping, so let's see how much we can do. Let's just see. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've done all we're gonna do in this episode, and so let's check it out. I didn't actually get to doing much in the uh, little courtyard here, although I did put in sort of the side with the, the checkerboard pattern and some plants over there. We've got these uh, flying buttresses sort of supporting the building on the sides there and uh yeah i got quite a bit done on the interior um uh, especially on stream i got a lot done so shout out to everybody who stopped by the stream and had fun uh with me while i kind of worked on this stuff but yeah now we've got a little place for the preacher to stand and sort of address the uh the rows of people sitting i i don't know any of the technical terms pews i know there's pews I don't know if this is the pew or these are the pews, but there are pews in here. Of course, we've got our neat little spider uh, church logo on the banner up there. Will you, will you stop interrupting? The, the patrons of this church are not very friendly. I will say that about spider church. Uh, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of jerkwads in here, to put it lightly. But uh, one, one thing that made a huge difference was putting in the extra pillars and, and, you know, carrying them up to the ceiling, starting to add some archways and give this interior a little bit more structure. We've sort of dressed up the bottom of the spider farm, and that's got our nice symbol on it and some lights hanging down. And then, of course, the centerpiece of this room right in front of the window is this gorgeous pipe organ, which is a design I adapted... It's from a, a cool channel called Average Tuna Sandwich, and the video is Seven Loom Building Ideas for Minecraft. I'll uh, I'll put a link on the screen and in, in the description. It's a it's a good video, but the uh, the pipe organ was such a cool design. I knew I had to incorporate it into the church somehow. And yeah, it's inspired me to maybe try and get a little bit more creative with the banners uh, around this world because uh, I I don't know. It just goes to show just how creative you can get with the banners. But we're also using some, you know, looms on the side, some uh, daylight sensors to be like the pipes poking out the top. So there's some really creative stuff in this design. I think in his design he had used brown wool, but I don't have brown dye or brown wool in abundance. So I had to uh, adapt it to be black to match the black stone, which kind of fits for the church anyhow. So I would say the exterior of this church is pretty much finished, finito. Um, there's not really much more I got to do other than put in the windows and maybe a little bit of detail here and there, but I think the back's looking really, really, really cool, um, especially, and the sides came out pretty decent. Uh, they're a little bit plainer than I would like them to be, but I don't think you're going to see the side perspective too often, and yeah, I think, it, I think it came out decent. Um, it's kind of a squat cathedral. Usually cathedrals are a little bit longer. This is kind of a, a squarish cathedral. So I, I didn't have too much more space going back that way. And maybe I should have made the platform that it rested on a little bit bigger so I would have had more room. 
But uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the, the shape and the look of this cathedral, all things considered. Uh, I think this is one of one of, if not the coolest thing <laughs> I've ever built. So uh, you know, in a single build like this. So yeah. Um, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. We got so much done from the shores of Salacia to the entire, uh, you know, interior of this spider cathedral. Pray for the spider god. The harder you pray, uh, the more, uh, spiders will drop from this farm. And, um, one like on this video equals one prayer for spider god. What's that? A message from spider god himself? What, what, what is it, my lord? Please subscribe to Mob Swamp. Well, well, you heard the arachnid. You got to do it. Hit the subscribe button for Spider God, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next episode. Have a have a have a great life. Yeah.